Hi there, it's Bob here from Insidium. This is Top Tip Tuesday. And on today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take fluid sim particles and how we can create a mesh, which is often what you need to do for render time. I'm going to show you how we can smooth off that mesh to make it look nice and slick, but also, and this is key, how we can smooth it, but keep hold of all of that really important particle fluid detail. So these are tricks with the XP Open VDB mesher. So let's start that clock and we'll jump into cinema. In our scene then we have this cached fluid solve. Let's just uh, look at the setup quickly. It is a spherical emitter. We're emitting a shot in hexagonal mode, zero speed, one centimeter radius for our particles and they're being moved around by this NX turbulence which is in Voronoi's noise type with a strength of nine and then we're getting this really cool fluid motion from an NX fluids it's in PBD mode because that's what we use to get these really nice tendrils we've upped the sub steps to five we've put the external pressure up to a hundred which kind of exaggerates this tendrilling effect and we've also increased the attraction to 40 and the repulsion to 80 and that's given us this and it, it just took 17 seconds to cash really quick sim so this is great loads of detail here we've got these big kind of bodies of water but also these really fine tendrils and this can be a challenge to mesh so let's look at how we would do it go to insidium x particles generators open vdb mesher in the general general tab we'll drag in our cached emitter and now we've got our blobs of particles hit play and we've kind of got an approximation of it. It looks like the same sim, but obviously there's just no detail there at all. Let's hit NB to see the lines. So what we need to do is we need these, um, you can see the individual particles here actually, can't you? And you can see that actually it's created quite a large blob around each particle. If we make that measure invisible, here we can see look, there's a cluster of five or six particles here, but the mesh is way bigger. And the reason it's done that is this, the way it meshes particles, it kind of creates a shell around each particle. And the size of that is dictated by the point radius. And it basically multiplies the radius of the particle. So that's 10, uh, one times 10 is 10. So there is a 10 centimeter shell around this particle. And that is the volume that gets sampled to then create the mesh. So we need to reduce this down. So let's just reduce the point radius down and it's making that volume around each particle um, reduce. But we'll get to a certain point where the voxel size is too big to be able to sample such a small volume size. So we need to reduce the voxel size down to make it more accurate. So let's put this way down to say one which is a really fine voxel grid. And look, as a result, we get much smaller polygons. And now it is able to sample that smaller volume. Um, but look, let's reduce this down even further to maybe, could we go down to 1.5? Something like that. Okay, so let's hit NA. So now what we've done is we've created a mesh which much more closely resembles the particles. Let's just make that invisible. And you can see, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty similar, but obviously it's way too bumpy and knobbly. So what we need to do now is reduce and smoothen this out without losing the detail. And that's the tricky bit. So if we go to our filters and we add a filter, let's use filter. This median one that's on by default has done quite a good job. It's suddenly much smoother. But if I wanted to go even smoother, let's increase the iterations. Suddenly we're starting to lose the mesh because look, the particles are poking through. If we make the particles invisible, we've lost the bit of mesh, for example, that joined this bit. If we put those iterations back down to one, it reappears again. So we're getting a nice smoothing effect from our median, but we're losing some of that detail. So for us, this one's not gonna be useful. We'll get rid of it. And instead, we're going to use a curvature. Now, curvature is really useful in this instance to get rid of blobbiness without reducing the kind of volume where we need it. So if we then go to our curvature and start increasing the iterations, we're going to get a smoother and a smoother mesh without losing too much of the volume. Now, as I went up to four iterations, 
let's just make our particles visible again I noticed that we did lose a little bit of mesh volume so what we could do is go back to our general let's increase our point radius which is going to make them generally a bit fatter let's just just by a small amount it was 1.5 let's put it on to 1.7 but by doing that, we are giving ourselves more volume to then smoothen out with our filters before it disappears. Let's go back to our curvature and then let's smoothen that a bit more. So now we've got a really smooth mesh, but if we just make it invisible, I would argue that it's maybe not quite hugging the particles quite enough. So at this point, what we could do is put one more filter on top, and this is an offset which will make the kind of the surface shrink in on itself. Now in its default, it's a little bit too aggressive. Look, it's shrunk it and it's made all the particles visible again. So that has definitely got rid of some of the mesh where we wanted it. But what we can do is highlight the offset and reduce the strength of it until we get the mesh back. Yeah. Excellent, something like that. So we've thinned it out but we haven't got rid of any of the mesh. And now you can see that we have perfectly smoothed this mesh for our liquid, but we have retained all of the detail of these fine tendrils. Let's just go into this scene camera. I've got a Cycles 4D softbox. Let's go to our Insidium Cycles real-time preview. Here is our mesh. And in our Material Manager look, we have got a shader here that's got random walk on let's stick that on our open vdb mesher and there we have got this really cool detailed smooth fluid from our particle sim and we've retained all of that tendril detail just by getting the mesh and the filters right